I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, June the 13th, 2016. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu extended his deepest condolences to the American people after the deadly massacre this weekend at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, that left 50 people dead and dozens injured. Speaking at the start of his weekly cabinet meeting, Netanyahu said Israel stood shoulder to shoulder with the American people. He said, we are all shocked by the horrible massacre in Orlando, adding, I want to express condolences in the name of the government and the Israeli people to the American people and the families of the victims at this difficult hour. Netanyahu said that enlightened countries of the world must unite to fight the global terror threat. The gunman in Orlando, Omar Sadiqi Mateen, had reportedly pledged his allegiance to the Islamic State terror group at the time of the shooting. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin sent his condolences to U.S. President Barack Obama. Rivlin wrote in a letter, this attack against the LGBT community in Orlando is as cowardly as it is abhorrent. The Israeli people stand shoulder to shoulder with our American brothers and sisters in the moral and just fight against all forms of violence and hatred. And vigils were held across Israel in solidarity with the victims of the Orlando attack. The Tel Aviv municipality lit its building to display the LGBT pride flag, the American and Israeli flag. Jewish leaders across the U.S. called for unity and solidarity after the attack including CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, who called the attack an unconscionable hate crime and an act of terrorism and cautioned against any sort of backlash. Greenblatt said Americans should not blame all Muslims for the actions of one individual. He said we must remember that we do not define people by their faith, adding we urge all Americans to not fight hatred with hatred, but rather to come together around our common values of decency and respect. Israel police said the two Palestinian terrorists who murdered four Israelis in Tel Aviv last week got into Israel from the West Bank through a hole in the security fence. According to the Times of Israel, cousins Mohammed Ahmad and Khalid Mahamra were able to get through a gap in the fence near the Jewish settlement of Meitar. They then took a taxi to Tel Aviv where they shot up the Sarona market Wednesday evening. Both are in Israeli custody, as is a Palestinian accomplice who gave the two assistance prior to the shooting. And the terrorist who killed three people on a bus in Jerusalem in October was convicted today of three counts of murder. Arab Israeli Bilal Abu Ghanem was also convicted by a Jerusalem district court today of seven counts of attempted murder and aiding the enemy in wartime. He and another man, Baha Alian, shot and stabbed passengers aboard a bus in the neighborhood of East Halpiot on the morning of October the 13th of last year, murdering 78-year-old Chaviv Chaim and 51-year-old Alon Govberg. 76-year-old U.S. citizen Richard Lakin died about two weeks later from critical injuries he sustained during the attack. Abu Ghanem is expected to receive three consecutive life sentences. The second terrorist, al Yan, was shot and killed at the scene of the attack. Two Israeli teenagers were lightly injured late last night when rocks were thrown at a bus they were traveling on in East Jerusalem. Earlier yesterday, an Israeli woman was lightly injured when her car was hit with stones in the southern West Bank. Ynet reports that rabbinical courts in Israel and in Europe have come together to create an international database for Jewish men who refuse to grant their wives a get or Jewish divorce. The action was discussed over the last few days at a conference for European rabbinical judges being held in Brussels, Belgium. The new database will contain the names and photos of get refusers, allowing the Jewish communities to sanction and ostracize them. Rabbi Eliyahu Maimon, who directs the Israeli Rabbinical Courts Division for Agunot, which literally translates to mean chained women, said that a similar database was already in existence in Israel, created about eight years ago. It would now be expanded. He told Haaretz this is only the first step. Eventually, we plan to include rabbinical courts from the United States as well. Maimon said that by sharing information through this new database, we would hope to prevent the possibility of these men feeling welcome anywhere.
Under Jewish law, it is only by receiving a get that women can remarry and have children. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight, Monday, June the 13th, at 7 o'clock, Dr. Ruth Westheimer shares some of her wisdom via a children's book she wrote for her grandson. At 8 o'clock, Stephen Baim of the American Jewish Committee leads a discussion on the future of modern orthodoxy. With Blue Greenberg of the Orthodox Feminist Alliance, Chaim Steinmetz of Kehilat Jeshurun, and Anna Pava of Yeshivat Maharat in an event of Porat the People for Orthodox Renaissance, and Torah. At 9 tonight, a special L'chaim in tribute to the late Rabbi Harold Schulweis. And at 10 o'clock, businessman and author Dove Seidman shares his moral philosophies with New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman from the 92nd Street Y in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Mark Golub is joined by Rob Eshman, who is publisher and editor-in-chief of the Jewish Journal of Los Angeles. He discusses Jewish reaction to Hillary Clinton's and Donald Trump's becoming their party's nominees and how he expects Jews to vote. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, June the 13th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.